Hey traders, John Hal here. I'm gonna, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to analyze your stock or whatever market you're looking at right now and how to analyze it in a way where you can see whether it's getting too top heavy, where we're getting a bit, a bit too overvalued or a bit too overbought or oversold and um and and also like what's and what's and and how to actually tell that so you can find much more higher probability ch uh, sections or um uh, ty or times in the market to have very high probability trades so let's get straight into it guys do not place your trade based on what you see in this video because trading is risky and it can cause substantial financial loss you know there's no guarantees of making money in the markets so be smart about the way that you're trading okay now let's just let's just bring up any stock. It doesn't matter what stock you're looking at. Um, it, it's it, this is just a, it's, it's a general rule of thumb. So you can use this on a weekly chart or you can use this on a daily chart. I like to use it on both, but let's just keep it really simple. Let's just bring up say Amazon here for a minute. Okay, I've just put up Amazon. It doesn't matter what stock it is. It really really doesn't. You can look at this yourself. And what I want you to do is when you're looking at the, when you're looking at Amazon. Let me take everything off the screen here. And my computer is so slow today. Oh, okay. It's actually not on the right one, is it? There we go. All right, so what you wanna do right now is, right, so you can see Amazon, right? And normally when you're looking at Amazon, you may look at a very, very short term chart, maybe three to six months to see where it's been and what sort of, what's going on right now, makes sense? So three to six months and all that sort of stuff. But what you wanna really do when it comes to looking at the bigger picture of where Apple is or where that particular stock is, is it overbought or is it oversold and so on and so forth? is you wanna bring up a much larger view, all right? So maybe bring up, say, even like the last two years, squeeze it up as much as possible to see where we're, to see where we are at and what's really going on. Now, what I like to use on the chart is I like to use a 52 moving average. Now, notice something on this chart here when it comes to the 52 moving average. Now, why 52? It's just the number that I've used. You could use, it doesn't, the number's not irrelevant. It's just more of a longer term view. It just gives me a good couple of months. Could be a 60, could be a 70 moving average. You test it out. The numbers are relevant. It's the meaning of what the moving average does, which measures which measures what? Price and time, which simply means that when the market's too far away from the moving average, there's too much price and now time needs to catch up. And we have a high probability chance of going sideways to let the moving average catch up or either a retracement back to the moving average. So as you can see here, right, if I go back over time, if you go back over time and look at my, look at, you know, look at this here, notice how the, when we're down the bottom here, notice how when we get to, when we, this one here actually got pretty far away and then it went sideways to the 52, see that there? And then what, and then we actually went for another run and then we had another bounce back to the 52, bounce back and actually we got pretty high there, bounce back and actually stayed pretty close to it, didn't they? Went back to 52, went back to 52 and then we got a big gap up, didn't we? And then as, as you can see, right, that's what happened here. When we started to get over, when we get started to get up here, look, the distance from there to there, what ended up happening is it, it got pretty far away, didn't it? So what ended up happening, it either got a pull back to the 52 or it just goes sideways to let time catch up and then we can start our move up again. It ran up again, as you can see, and then we got distance from the 52 again, and then we had a pullback to the 52, and then we went for another run, and then we had a pullback to the 52. See, and and notice how the 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 uh, the, the section or the distances from the 52 to where it gets distances and then has a pullback. Distances from the 52 and then has a pullback, and you'll be able to see this the the maximum distance that it actually has from the 52, right? As you can see here, right, maximum 50, 52. Now each stock has its own has its own how like how how much it likes to become extended from the 52. It's not the same time all the time. But look at this here, right? We got distance from the 52, and look at it from here to here. So as is as Amazon was getting sold off pretty strongly, as you can see, right, the distance from the 52 was quite strong. So that means we did what? We did a lot of price in a short period of time. Now time needs to catch up. So either two things are gonna happen. We're gonna get a pullback to the 52, or we're just gonna go sideways for a minute, let the 52 catch up, which means it's just time catching up, and then we're likely to continue down or up, or down. who knows what's gonna happen in the future. But when I'm at, when, how do I use this in my own trading? Well, I look at the particular stock that I'm trading, and if I'm noticing that it gets a certain distance away from the 52 before retracing, and I can see that's a repetitive sort of angle, what I mean by that is I'll go to here, and then I'll go from, and I'll measure from, say, from here to there, to where it's maximum. Make sense? 
and then I, and then actually let me just delete that and then I'll go from actually not let me just delete everything off the screen here for a minute and I'll, I'll go from say from from this yeah, actually this point up here and then I'll go down and I'll measure it from the 52 right then I'm going to create a parallel trend line and look at that there right it was almost almost the same uh, just a little bit shorter than this same here right let's actually create a parallel trend line again and let's go to here as you can see, right, this one here was a bit shorter, wasn't it, before it actually had a retracement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the 52 from there to there, right, so there to there. I'm going to create a parallel trend line, and I'm going to bring this up through here. And as you can see, what ended up happening, the, di the height to the 52, right, that was the maximum. Let's actually create another parallel trend line. Let's go, to the, let's go, to, let's go over here, and let's bring this up through to here. And as you can see, right, actually when it got when it got just above that, the maximum distance that it, that it's gotten away from first stair step, second stair step, third stair step, um, it's what it's it's um it's telling you, right, that we're getting pretty overextended. Now, um, now by the way, guys, whenever we go through a, a detailed run, we generally go through three stair steps, and the second third step is the most powerful, and the third stair step is not. What I mean by that. Just a quick analogy here. You can see here, right? See how we went all sideways through here? That's like a price reset. And then we had, what did, what did we have? We had run right, right up through here. We had run up sideways. As we broke out of this sideways raise, we had stair step one, stair step two, and then stair step three. Notice stair step three was the end of the trend. You'll notice that time and time again, you know, in the markets. Down through here, we had stair step one, stair step two, and then we had stair step three, which was the end of the trend type thing. And then we had a bit of a resting phase. That's generally what has happened. It generally goes through three major stair steps. There we go, stair step, there we go, stair step one, stair step two. This was the stair step two, and this was the stair step three. But as you can see, right, stair step one and two is the most powerful. Then we go through a bit of a resting phase again, for a bit of a price reset. Stair step one, two, three. That's generally the way the markets work, um, and then so on and so forth. Makes sense? So as you can see, right, um, and now, and uh, so that's actually a bit of a bit of a tool. So now we can see how that's all working out, right? We can see the differences. So whenever you're analyzing your stock, and whenever I'm going, whenever I'm going to get into the trade, I use this tool to say, okay, then is this likely to pull back to the 52? Meaning, has it done too much price, or is it is it you know in, stuck in the middle, sort of somewhere? Is it is it, is it um is it um is, is it is it depending on where it is, right? Now this is also tells me this also gives me a bit of a guidance, not. Well, not all of it, but a small bit of guidance of has this got the potential to run on for uh, for good profits, like more than one or two days, uh, or is it just a short term trade? So I hope this helps you out, guys. Before you go, make sure you grab the free Grab the Markets by the Balls training course. In this training course, you're going to learn the top 13 deadly mistakes, the success formula, charting boundaries, the PT method, the ultimate trading system, the blast off trading system, number one in trading indicator, the million dollar trade and money management, how successful traders approach the market, and so much more. Get this training course for free right now. Click on the very first link in the description to get this whole complete trading course to give you the edge on your side of trading this market. Do that right now, and I'll see you on the other side.